Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. It's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble, and we go from now until midnight Eastern Time here on the right, co- the left. Is it the left coast? Wait a minute. It's uh, the uh, the right coast of America. Okay, I got it straight. You got it straight. Okay. Well, you know it's time as we do uh, once a week. We love to check in with an old friend, ladies and gentlemen from lovely San Francisco, California. It's the music of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Heavily influenced by Phil Spitalny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in his all-girl orchestra. You remember that? <laughs> yes, you sent me that. Those videos were hilarious. <laughs> I yeah, I always found it. I always found it off-putting. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I a, a female violinist that looks wonderful. Uh, a female pianist, it, it, terrific. But a female playing a trombone. <laughs> In fact, anybody playing a trombone, I suppose, yeah, is but... you know, has its problems. Yeah, there were, for people who are don't know what we're talking about, there was a uh, there was a guy by the name of Phil Spitalny, and he ran a thing called his All Girl Orchestra. All girl. They, they wouldn't even use the term girl today. Right, uh, the all girl orchestra, and uh, it, it was an all female orchestra, and with uh, and featuring. Do you remember the featuring part? No, uh, Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> now that was fine. I didn't mind a woman playing a violin. That that seemed fine. But you know. Uh, a, a, a female drummer just never never seemed right to me. I don't know why. I guess because I think of the drums as a very masculine instrument, you know. And I, do, I don't know of any other, I don't know of very many female drummers, you know. If females go for anything, they go for guitars, you know, stuff like that. But am I being a, a sexist, rather? Possibly. Although the, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of female drummers would have been... Uh there was a girl in the Go Go's and the uh, well, the, there were all girl groups. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. There were, and she was a pretty good drummer too. I think she was a good one. Yeah. You know, but um, um, those all girl groups didn't last very long, though. Uh, the Go Go's were very short lived. And I'm trying to think of what was the other one? There was one other, the... Uh, the Bangles. The Bangles. That was Walk Like an Egyptian, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, the Bangles. But they didn't... La- I think they had one hit and that was it, right? Yeah, they were pretty good, but they didn't last long. Well, they had one hit. Maybe that was it. <laughs> Walk Like an Egyptian, which I thought was <laughs> silly. Another silly concept, you know. But uh, anyway, so uh, so anyway, we have a you you I when I wrote, I write you the day before we're going to do our little get togethers to remind you and you wrote me this time. Well, I'm not feeling well, but I'll do it anyway. What a trooper. Yes. What's wrong? I'm a trooper. What's wrong? I've uh, let's see exactly a week ago. I got the flu. So mm-hmm. it's still uh, coming out of it, but it was a, not a fun week. So the flu. Now, wait a minute. Was it a flu or was it a cold? Uh, let's, I let's see, uh, it was body aches and fever. You had so, a fever uh, and body aches, that would be the flu. Yeah. But people get a cold and they go, I had the flu. And no, no you have to, the things that make it a flu are a temperature and body aches, you know. So you definitely had the flu. Did you get yeah. your flu shot? I, di- I never do. So this is the first year now, it hit me. Why do you never get it? Uh, once I got the shot and it made me feel pretty sick, so uh, I don't really trust them. No, I I get it every year. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and you uh, never have uh, a reaction to it? No, not really. I mean, you, maybe a day afterwards you feel a little, 
you know, but that's about it, you know, because they're giving you a little shot of the of the stuff of the virus, but it shouldn't. It, sh- it you know, it sh- can affect you, but not like the flu itself. And there's so many strains, though. Even getting a shot doesn't guarantee you're gonna. Well, what they do is they they take the three main strains uh, that are coming out of Asia, and uh, they then guard against those. And sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes those are not the ones that headed this way, but they have to predict it ahead of time. Uh, here's what I think is the solution to the flu, um, and and uh, I know a lot of people think this is a little extreme, but I'm gonna. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> All flus come from where? You Asia, I think. Yep. And where in Asia? China. Yeah, but I mean, besides a location, where? Uh, what kind they of... They come from animals. Animals, right, right. Animals get the flu, then they pass it on to the Asian. Now, it always comes from Asia. So isn't there a way we can kind of prevent the flu by just not letting Asians into the country? <laughs> or not allowing us to go to Asia? That would help, yeah. That would help a great deal. Or kill all the farm animals in Asia. That would stop the flu. That would stop it, yes. Am I being a little severe on this uh, suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you if you get the flu, it wouldn't sound severe at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, Trump is always looking for horrible things to say about uh, Asians and about you know China especially. And if he made the case that you know we get our flus from them, at least he would be on some solid <laughs> ground, you know. But instead, it's back that. Yeah, instead it's that uh, you know I don't like taking two from column B, you know. So anyway. Remember when you yes, went? Yes, I remember when I kid. The first flu I ever heard of in the '60s was the swine flu. It was from China. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, they all come from Asia. It's it, it, that's how they predict what they're going to put in the flu shot that's coming here that we take here. Is they look at Asia, they see what strains are there, they get samples of the strains, they put them into a vaccine, and then you get the vaccine. But that's how we do it. We don't go to Europe and say what's the flu over here. Yeah. You know, you never hear about the European flu, do you? <laughs> You're right. Now, the, during World War, during World War II, what was the big thing? There was a, there was a, was it a flu that was going around that was killing people like crazy? I'm trying to remember what it was exactly. There was the uh, actually the 1918, the World War One was the Spanish flu. Spanish flu, okay, which killed 65 million people. 65 million people. Now, do you know that that flu was so bad that they canceled the war for a while over they it? The really? They canceled <laughs> the war to take time out to get over the flu. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. Well, yeah, that's an incredible number of people that killed Jesus. Yeah. How come I couldn't remember the Spanish flu? But that, now there was a flu that supposedly was not from Asia, but it might have started in Asia, and then it went to Spain or whatever, and then it was called the Spanish flu. But 65, you, you, I, I'm sure you're right on your statistic, because you always are. Yeah, it was 65 million within a year, so Six, that, would have just, yeah. that was good population control. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how many did the war kill? Probably far less. Oh, yeah, like less than three million. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't lose many in that war, by the way, because... We got in late. We got in really late. We were there for the last maybe year and a half, two years of that war. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And I think we were post-flu, not <laughs> not pre-flu. Mm. So again, another war that uh, no, no one seems to know why it even started. <laughs> yeah. So you so you just refused to get the flu shot because you had a negative. Uh, I refuse. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I don't. I'm not wearing the uh, flu shot. And uh. yeah, I get it every year, uh, and I have been pretty. I don't think I've gotten the flu in all the time that I've been taking it. You know, so I guess it works. I mean, I've gotten bad colds, but that's not the flu. 
In fact, I'd rather get the flu and just be knocked out and lying in bed sleeping all day than getting a cold where I'm going around sniffling and coughing and hacking and wheezing. I hate colds. Flu. Yeah, well, flu I, I can that. live with or die with, one or the other. First night I went to bed at 1 in the morning, got up at 5 the next night. So Yeah. You know, you know what happened to me? i got to tell you this. Um, um, years ago... When I was starting out in radio, and I was, uh, I was actually working in Klamath Falls, Oregon, um, I got to know a guy by the name of Ted Randall. He had been a disc jockey at KOBY, which was the first top 40 station in San Francisco. And uh, he ran a broadcast consultancy. Now, I had never heard of radio consultants until that particular time. And what he would do is he would consult, say, our station in Klamath Falls, and he would send out the playlist every week, and he would send out the records to go with the playlist. So he was a complete service that way. And on top of that, he then also sent out what we call station imagers, which are like, uh, you know, the the the, uh, the promos that say, this is KLAD, Klamath Falls, Oregon, playing the hits, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And so I got to know him. I think I may have actually gotten the job in Klamath Falls because of him, because of, of having met up with him and uh, asking him if he knew of any work. And when I went to Klamath Falls, he hired me to do these promos for all these stations. Uh, so I did all the production for those, for those stations that he represented. And um, so I, uh, years have passed now. You know, I didn't even think about Ted Randall. I think I mentioned him when I was doing my life history. I mentioned that I had known Ted mm -hmm. Randall and did these promos and so on for him. But basically, outside of that, I had forgotten all about him until a guy with the Bay Area uh, uh, Broadcast Hall of Fame uh, sent a picture of him and put it up on my site of Ted Randall when he was a young man at KOBY in San Francisco saying, here's the guy you're talking about, right? So I then looked him up. The guy is still alive. Wow. Now he had to be, God, I'm, I mean, how old was I at the time? I, get, I, hadn't, I hadn't gone into the military yet, so I had to be somewhere around 20, something like that. And um, uh, he, so it, let's say he was 30. Let's just say he was 30. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, he's like got to be, he's got to, he's got to be in his late 80s, early 90s. And he's still alive. And that was great news for me because everybody I know is dying. I know. So here I got some news where this guy who I assume was long gone is still alive. He's living in Canada, which is kind of like not being alive at all, but he's living in Canada. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, that that kind of made me feel better about things. Yeah, know? yeah. So. And how long did you work in Klamath Falls? Oh, God, how long? You know something? These things elude me now. You know, they wouldn't elude you. You have every date you ever did anything yeah, on. Yeah, it, it must have been so cheap to live there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, let me see. Where? Wh wh what year was that? I'm trying to remember. I uh, went from K KDOT in Reno, Nevada, which I think was I was. But God, I, I, it's, I got it. Had, had to have been like 19. Yeah, it was 19. Uh, and then when I came home, I looked for radio stations, and I finally found what I think probably through Ted Randall, the station in Oregon called KLAD. And uh, so I had to be, it had to be when I was either 19 or 20. Um, so uh, that's, that's when I was working there. Um, it was a, the, a radio station that operated out of a, uh, what can I call it, a, a, a lumber yard, a, rail, a, a lumber state. Oh. How do I describe it? A lumber depot on a in a in the middle of a train station, train, <laughs> you know where all the trains come together, 
And they yeah. had this this lumber office, which this radio station had taken over. And we did we put up the radio station there, and the transmitter was in the backyard, and um, we'd be doing a show. And as we're doing a show, uh, a, a, a train would go rolling by, and they all knew we were a radio station, so they blew their horn. <laughs> and um, uh, what we would do? This is a great story. Uh, they would. Uh, it was in the middle of this. I, I don't know what you call railroad yard. Okay. So there were a lot of tracks going every which way and trains going in and out of it. And um, I had to cross the railroad tracks to get to the radio station. And sometimes I would get to the tracks and there was a train there and it's not moving. Because obviously it's a train it's a, a train yard and it's waiting to maybe go in somewhere or whatever. So then I have to wait for the goddamn train to move before I can get to the radio station. Well, on one particular occasion, uh, we got a pack of these records from Ted Randall, and, and we had a show that went on at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon that was called The New Music Show or something like that, or The New Top Ten, and we had to have all the new records and so on. And I get to the... I, I went down to pick it up at the post office, and I come back, and there's a train right there. And I don't know what to do. I'm not going to climb. I'm not going to crawl under the train, right, to bring the records because who knows if the train starts, I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> you know, squashed like a fly. So uh, one guy is on the other side going, "We need the records. We need the records." So I am throwing them one at a time <laughs> <laughs> over the train so that they can have the records on time to play them on the air. Wow. That 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 was one of my great adventures in in radio was at, uh, K, uh, what he called uh, KLA, K, wait, K, KLAD in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and then uh, 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 the other thing I remember about working there, and this is my this is the moment with, in which I sit here to this day and go, God, what a missed opportunity. They had one room, and what they did is they took all the records that they got, both from Ted and just from the record companies, and they would just throw them into this room. And it was like this room full of like 45 records everywhere on the floor, piled high. And so when I had nothing to do, I would go into this room, and I would start looking to see if there was anything I wanted because it was they were there for the taking, you know. Uh, so I would look through records. Oh, yeah, pa new Pat Boone record. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that. Oh, let's see, a new uh, new Fats Domino record. Oh, I'll keep that. And I remember, and it, my mind just, I can still to this day, after all these years, see this record in my hands. It was a Sun record, right, Ooh. of Elvis Presley. And it was um, uh, which which song which record was it? Um, I just had it in my mind, and then it flittered away. So uh, I think Blue Moon of Kentucky was Blue on Moon? one side, yeah. and on the other side was the was the bigger hit, and uh, I was holding it in my hands, holding it in my hands, and I threw it over to the discard pile. Wow. If I had that record, do you know how much that record's worth today? I'd like to that, know. That, that Sun record. It's worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $25,000. Wow. <laughs> and I remember seeing it right in my <laughs> right, right, right in my face, right? And just threw it off to the side. This one, he wasn't even with RCA yet. He was still with Sun Records. Yeah. You know, and 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 it, it, that record I understand is is worth a fortune. But, but oh, what was it? What was the what was the main side on that? I forget now. I, I had it in my mind. I was about ready to say it, and then it flittered out of my head. So, well, that's the way my memory's going these days. Slowly, I won't even know who you are when I call <laughs> you. Well, that must have been very cool to be that young and working in radio. Well, yeah. It, it also, uh, I had to work in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Uh, do you know where that is? 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> like the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, no, it's not the middle of nowhere, but as somebody once said, you can see nowhere from there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, it uh, it's uh, uh, on the other side of the California border, north. You go up uh, through uh, California through Dunsmuir and sounds like that. This is before I five, probably. Uh, was there on I? I don't think there was an I five at that point. No, no. And uh, uh, then you go th- over what they call a high desert. Uh, it's a high altitude desert. And then you drive and you drive and you drive and finally you arrive in Klamath Falls, Oregon. And at that time, there were 20,000 people living in the town. Can you imagine a town of 20,000 people? I mean, that, that, that had most, if I say Klamath Falls, Oregon, everybody's heard of it. Yeah. You know, but you don't think of it as being a town of just 20,000 people. And it was a strange little town because in 1920, somebody decided that all these trees that were in the city were a blight on the community, and they cut them all down. <laughs> so literally, it was this treeless city. It was just, it was just pathetic, just absolutely pathetic. And but there was one good thing about Klamath Falls, Oregon, and most people. I saw some of the biggest acts in rock and roll. Uh, excuse me, I'm getting a tissue here. Uh, in in rock and roll, in that town, you can say, well, how come? I mean, why would they go to Klamath Falls, Oregon? Well, they didn't go to Klamath Falls, Oregon. What happened was, Klamath Falls, Oregon was about the halfway point between Portland and San Francisco. And so let's say you were, well, I, the guy, one of the guys I saw there was Fats Domino. Let's say you were Fats Domino and you were playing Portland or you're playing Seattle. And now you're going to go to, your next stop is San Francisco or Oakland or something like that. So you, you, you it, that's like a two-day drive. So in order to be efficient and to keep making money, you stop somewhere to do a gig. And so they would spend the night in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and do a gig there so they could make some extra money. So all the big acts came through and stopped there. And the way I learned all of that was my father told me that when he was a musician and the band was like traveling down the coast, they would play Klamath Falls because that was the halfway point. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So I saw people like Fats Domino. I remember, I think Rick Nelson was there. Uh, and a lot of different people would just stop and play this dumpy little town of 20,000 people. And, of course, they were very accepting of it because, you know, they had no other entertainment in their lives. You know, so. Uh, how long were you there? I was there. God, I you know, that, that eludes me as well. I think, God, I, I know it was under a year. It might have been six months. Well, were, you, were you like a big celebrity? <laughs> It, anybody who was on the radio was it was a big celebrity. Come on, yeah. No, I mean it wasn't a matter of being a big celebrity or anything. I I was just learning my craft, and then I got a job in Modesto, California, uh, and uh, um, from then and then after Modesto, I had to go into the military. So you know, I thought that was going to kill my career, but it didn't because I went into Armed Forces Radio and Television in Hollywood. So. Mm. That was cool. Yeah. Anybody else want to know the complete history of my of my mediocre career? You know. I want to hear the whole thing. Yeah. Yes, it's come. It's come. Well, you can hear it. I did my whole life, you know, and it's online. At um, let's see here, uh, you go to uh, gabnet dot net forward slash abl dot htm, and that will get you to a page. With all my, with a, it was 57 episodes, half hour each. Wow. Of my entire life. And I have not done one since because nothing interesting has happened in my life since I did that a year and a half ago. <laughs> so, you know, I have no real way to, to, to bring it to a, a smashing close. But, you know, working these small towns uh, taught me everything I need to know about broadcasting. Sure. Yeah, it really was a 
a, a training ground for me. And ultimately, I wound up in uh, many, uh, wound up in Houston, Texas, working for a guy by the name of Gordon McClendon, and that was like a radio boot camp, with him, with his company as kind of the drill sergeant. And what I learned about radio there, you know, I, I learned it out of fear. I didn't want to get fired, so I learned it. You know what I'm saying? So I had some, I had some great trainers. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. It just yeah. goes by when I do all the talking and and don't don't really ask you what's happening with your life, which we'll do. Well, you've ne- always got something new and interesting. I love to hear it. And we'll do it again <laughs> next week, ladies and you gentlemen. Got it. The man, the legend, who is Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. What was that all about? (laughs) Oh, wait a minute. No, we don't need that. And we don't need that. We need this. There we go. Oh, I know what it was. I I was over-modulating. And so you got that thing going for you. So I'm sorry about that. That for some reason, this uh, new board I've got does that, and I had the uh, volume all the way up because it was low on that interview. So, anyway, we're we're okay now. So, what the hell? Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, bring up the uh, Skype line uh, because that's the way we talk to our citizen panel. And then let me turn it on so that people can then call me. All right. Uh, I noticed we missed a call from SG. I wonder why. Well, who cares? Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, let me see. Hide conversation. Okay, I got it all ready to go now. Um, so anyway, uh, let me see here. What what was I going to say? I am. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that, that that bad sound there, but that was because I had the volume up too high. Hmm. I see. These are all new things I have to learn with the new equipment. So uh, I, I don't know why it does that because I could overmodulate with the other, the old board, and not have any problems. But I'm gl- very happy with this new one. I, it's just uh, takes a whole bunch of work. Oh, anyway, our lines are open uh, all week l- and long. Uh, what I've been doing, uh, and it, it, it's been uh, uh, an interesting learning curve. Um, is I've been trying to figure out how if things, if I can't use this Skype any longer, if all of a sudden one day I turn it on and the horrible people over at Microsoft go, you can't use it anymore, what do I do? And I started doing a lot of studying on that. So all weekend long I've been studying that. And I've come up with all the answers I need on how to get the picture on, but I still can't figure out how you get a citizen panel together. In other words, if I have a group of people, if I want a group of people, and let's say I have two or three because I called them and it was in, it was uh, easy, okay? Um, uh, oh, let me see here. Here comes R- R- Rob Alfano. That's for starters. I just can't figure out how the hell you, uh, how the hell you get, like if Rob just called, uh, and then another person calls. I just put add to contacts, and they, they're added to the picture. They're added to the group. And I still can't figure out how you do that with the new Skype. There is just doesn't seem to be any easy way to do it. Do you know what I'm talking about, Rob? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, though. It, I haven't played with Skype in such a long time. Well, you know what I decided? Well, you, you use Skype for this. You know. Well, yeah, but it's yeah. You see, but now it, here, it just, here comes Phil, and I push add to group, and there we go. It's that easy. That's what I mean. You know, you, have to, you know, you got to do more with it than we do. Well, here's the thing that I suddenly realized with all my complaining about it, and it is a problem. It is a real problem. Um, was that I use Skype in probably the most unique way anybody uses it in America. Okay, I'm probably the only person that uses it in this exact manner and for this exact reason. And so that's the uh, that's the problem, you know, and I, I don't know what to do. About and they it. don't and they don't care. Well, they don't care. They really yeah. don't. They have nary nary a care in the world. Excuse me. Let me do something for one second. Let me just run out here. I have to just do something. 
Hey, Mr. Rob. What's going on? Hey. Uh, uh, it looks like he's going to the can. <laughs> so. You think? Yeah. Yeah. I've had that, nope. a case of IBS all day. Uh, oh, and uh, I felt just then like I, I had to like run to the bathroom and do whatever. Uh, but um, so I get this is my Imodian. Uh, this is the best uh, single remedy for IBS that you can possibly imagine. Anyway, I'm the only one that uses Skype, I think, in the whole country for the exact purpose that I use it. And so I, I need it to be able to, to get people easily in here, uh, uh, you know, watching, the, you know, participating in the program. It's just they call, and I go add to group, and there they are, right? So I was doing, I was still, I still haven't gotten an answer anywhere on how you just, and I asked the question on Skype, you know, I put it in. Um, how do I add a person to a group who is calling me, and there's no answer. There's like all these other answers about, well, you can call, go to this person and it'll put the other one on hold. That's not what I want. You know, there's no, I've, I've, it's almost impossible to find an answer. Uh, hold on a second. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's time you create your own program. Yeah, Skype. oh right. Instead oh, yeah. of Skype. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I wish I had the money. I would. I would hire a bunch of people to build a program just for me and then maybe farm it out to other people as well. You know, here we go. Add the group and then we have Jeff Stein. Now, where is that same ability in the new Skype? But anyway, I the all, also, I can't use uh, my uh, switching program. Okay, I can't use my switching program with uh, with the new with the new Skype because it doesn't come up. So you have to go through another system. But I finally learned how to use that so that I could put all the people on the screen at the same time. I can even with this pro new this other program literally put you in a very nice pattern if I want to, you know. So against a background and all of that. That's going to be enough trouble, as it, but I know how to do it now. But what I don't know how to do is to do what I just did here. And, and they don't care over, over at Microsoft. They don't give a fucking goddamn shit. Remember, it's free. <laughs> well, charge me for it. I'll be happy to pay for it if it does what I need it to do. You know? Yeah. Maybe if everybody were paying for it, they wouldn't be as cavalier about changing it like they have. No, they, I think they, they love making changes. They do that with Office, yeah. and that's a real popular yeah. program. They do, it with their, they do it with the main OS, right? They do it with Windows. How many yeah. times has it changed? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Microsoft's, that's Microsoft's MO. Um, you mm -hmm. don't get support because it's a free program. What is what is wrong with SG? What is wrong with trying to get him on here? Add to group, and he doesn't uh, doesn't add. I don't know, and I don't know who Richard Johansson is. Uh, he's called before. Well, I, I think I, that guy was in Thailand and called you once. No, I don't think uh, that's him. That? No, oh. I don't think that's him. Uh, but I mean, I don't. I, it's weird. I'm having some weird problems there. But anyway, so I spent all weekend long, literally, at the computer, trying to get an answer to my that one question. And I finally found somebody who did a video on how to use this thing called NDI, which allows me, to, if you call, to then put your picture in there, and then somebody else calls to put another picture in there, and so on and so forth. And the good thing about it is I can get rid of any one of you that I want to. <laughs> so, Not bad. Yeah, but... Outside of that, I mean, first I got to get you all into Skype. And I can oh. do that. I think I can do that by sending you all a note saying, sign on, please. You know, I may be able to also give you a URL that you can use in your browser that will get you in to the thing. But I'm going to have to test that sometime, some weekend or something with you, Phil, and all see right. if that works. You know, if that works, 
then I can simply put a link on, on GabNet and tell people, click on that link, it'll take you to a page, and then you just simply sign on. Okay, I'm trying you one more time, SG, and if okay. you don't come up, no, nope, he's having, I'm having trouble getting him on. I'm you trying think to. He's calling an old. Uh, I'm trying to. No, I'm adding him to the group, but it won't. Uh, it won't add him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, weird. Press on hold. Call him back. Uh, uh, stop. Let me see here. Where is it? Where is he? He's not even here. Oh, there's SG. Okay. Let me try calling him. Add call to group, and let's see if he, if he picks up. We don't know. You know. Um, but SG, if you're listening to us, I'm ringing you right now, and you should pick up, okay? Uh, and we'll just see what happens. Uh, but for some reason, he has he, he always has trouble, and and then he tries eight million times, and it throws the show off completely, you know. Um, well, I'm calling him back, and he's not picking up. Yeah. So there, there's something wrong on his side or something. I have no idea. Hi, Tony. How you doing? All right. Did you? Uh, Sorry for uh, your uh, loss, Tony. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, so did you bury the old man? He's gone. Yeah. My <laughs> okay. mother had a my mother had a dream. I was telling Jackie she believes in the spirits. That I don't know if it means anything, but she saw Uncle Teddy last week. She saw. I never knew who he was. Who? She thinks that's a, my uncle Teddy. Your um, uncle looks, Teddy. Like, he liked my father, so she's I thinking see. that somehow that's a sign. Oh boy. Uh, she don't... saw him. Is Uncle Teddy alive? She dreamed. No, he's gone a long time. Oh, okay. So she says that's a good sign. He had his blue shirt on. I, I don't know. That's an effect of that wallpaper. Yeah, that wallpaper, man. No, it is a lot. No wonder you're. Trace. No wonder you're Norman Bates. Look at that wallpaper. <laughs> it's horrible. She's got a chandelier coming down here. Actually, I've been going. It's 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 weird. It's kind of it's weird because it's. Empty, but like I was gonna tell you, I miss him. But the way he was, I was kind of glad because it was a hard disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was hard. Yeah, yeah. Hey Tony, and pull pull your screen towards you yeah. uh, from the there top. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. A little more, a little more, a little more. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's good. Yeah. Like the dreams, like Rob, she has these dreams, so she's waiting for somebody else. She dreams because she'll come up and night says, "Oh, nanny came to me." Did she say anything? No. She's no. She was just there and she was happy. It's all right. Maybe, maybe well, she needs a CPAP machine. Are you sure that's not just regular dementia? No, actually, she's been like this for thirty years. Even when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Yeah. Okay. She, that, that's she, where you get it from. That's yeah. where it comes from. Now yeah. we know. <laughs> like I don't. It, it's not like, like I guess because it's on her mind, so it makes her be at peace. I think. Yeah. So I go along. So with was it. it a nice funeral and everything, or? I yeah, mean, not actually, that funerals are not day, you know, not that fu funerals are nice. No, but yeah. but it was actually well. My dad wanted one day because he said whoever wanted to see me would come, and really he didn't like some of the family, which I which I agree with. Mm -hmm. Like there were some people who I, Alex, there was three three cousins who we never see. Right? Mm -hmm. They came to the lunch, and they took doggy bags home. I wanted to vomit. Oh boy, I love Disgusting. that. I said, you son of a bitch. I said, my brother's like, we can't say anything. So my Aunt Barbara goes, can you believe these three? We haven't seen them in 15 years. They're taking doggy bags home. I, I said, I, I, just my put my on them. At my father's shiver at our house, uh, uh, cousins came, mm -hmm. uh, and they and they said, do you think you still need that snowblower? Oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh really? They wanted the snowblower. You know what are we gonna do? We're still living there. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my mother was pissed because not mad. She's don't say anything. But my aunt Barbara's like, you gotta be kidding. She turned in. She says, don't say nothing, but don't worry about it. She says, they'll get this. <laughs> Everybody does. You seem to be handling the death of your father pretty well, to tell me. Yeah, I am. You know why, Alex? I. I get a little down, but I'm trying to do like he said. Yeah. And for the fact that he liked to laugh. So I got to put it in perspective mm -hmm. that if that was me, I don't, it was a shock, but, and I was upset and I am, but I think I have to do what he wanted. Like, don't want me to cry and be like a bibbling fool every day. Yeah, he's just so laugh and just enjoy life. And the people who are jerks, he says, just stay away from. I'll, t me. I'll tell you something, Tony. What's strange is that when my father died, um, 
I, my, my wife at the time, Ronnie, told me that I cried in my sleep that night. Oh, you did? But, but, but I, otherwise, I was pretty even keeled. And I was even keeled for about a year, and everything was just how fine. How old were you? Uh, I was, how old was I? I think it was like 27, 26, oh, wow. 27. Wow. Yeah, and I was 17 when yeah, my father Oh, okay. Well, but anyway, what happened was, happened. what happened was about a year <clears throat> later, uh, I had some kind of problem. And my oh. immediate thought was I should call my father and get his opinion. <laughs> and then I, real, I came to the realization again yeah. that he was dead. And that yeah. was the first time it really hit me, and I got really depressed after that. Alex, yeah. can I ask you a question? Yeah. Might it, might it be easier for me because I'm the youngest and I have a brother and a sister? Oh, yes. I had nobody. I See, didn't. I feel bad because you were a lonely child. Maybe if you had an older brother or a sister, it might have been easier. Well, if I had if I had somebody to share the grief yeah. with and the load yeah. and the whole thing, but it was See, just I me. Do. And when my mother died, it was the same thing. Of course, she waited about 30 years more to die. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm thinking about what you said. Yeah, my she... she left me <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, uh, as I said about my mother, too stupid to live, too stupid to die, you know. Uh, uh, but she... Um, um, she and when she went again, you know, it was all on me, right? Yeah, I you, know. bad you were by yourself. Yeah, uh, and you yes, did a Jeff. Good job. I like that stone. Uh, yeah, the, the the headstone's beautiful, <laughs> Jeff. Well, I I really didn't plan on uh, sharing this with everybody, but uh, Tony started the, the consequence. Start started uh, started the shiva here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went to a funeral uh, the other day. Mm. Lady died 27 years ago. Oh, boy. What'd she have? She got hit by a truck. Holy oh, sh Walking in the, in the city. In New York yeah. City? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, I, I've, I've known her since she's like six years old. I yeah. mean, not particularly uh, close for any reason, but... Uh, I knew her father, who uh, used to be like a coach, and he was my son's coach at one time. And she used to come over there all the time, and she hated being there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it. Wow. Yeah. What a bummer, right? Well, I mean, well, that brought the show to a grinding halt. <laughs> you know, I have to tell people <laughs> that in, in the difference in New York, yeah. if you step off the sidewalk and there's a car coming, you're yeah. going to be a hood ornament. In California, if you look like you're going to want to step off the sidewalk, everybody stops. Stop. You know, That's they're crazy. crazy. Yeah. It's, well, it's I call I call California the land of no you go, no you go. And, oh and here's what God, I mean by that: you get to a intersection, and everybody just stays. No if there's no light, they all all stay still and going. No, you go. No, you go. No, you go. No, you go. I, it, and you, and you, making a left turn. Well, you know what you're supposed they to. They go do. one at a time. Well, you York, know you, they all go at the same time. Yeah, but you know what the custom <laughs> is legally right. is yeah. is how if you all come to a corner at the same time, right? The guy on the right is the, the, guy the right of way. You're the person on the yeah. right goes first. But everybody is kind of on the right if you all come to the intersection at the same time. And I've seen in California people sit there for five minutes not being able to figure out who's got to go next. <laughs> well, they're smoking a doobie. It, that's right, too. But um, I'll, I'll tell you, California freaked me out. I was walking around Santa Monica. And as a, I worked in Manhattan for years and walked around the city. And I am you know, not didn't think anything of stepping off the curb to yeah. just wait for a car to go by and the car comes to a skidding halt and I'm like what <laughs> I, was, I yeah, had no right. idea that that's what happened and you know they you step off the curb and everybody's got to come to a screeching halt in New York if you did that cars wouldn't move nobody's on the everybody's standing on the side hell in New York they hit you and then tell you to go fuck yourself <laughs> that's right <laughs> <You know. laughs> uh, by the way as long as we're speaking about you know what we were speaking about um I um, um, I got uh, some kind of bad news. Uh, my friend Jack Garfine's in ICU at oh, Beth yeah. Israel Hospital tonight. Um, he had uh, has pneumonia, 
and uh, he has heart heart problems. So uh, we I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't look terribly good, but. I keep saying to myself, that's what I get for getting to know an old guy, you know, and, and doing <laughs> I mean, an interview. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the man. I just absolutely yeah. love the man. So I, I'm, you know, well, hopefully, hopefully he'll pull out of this one, but you know, the guy is, um, he's 78 years old and not 78, uh, 88 oh. years old. And, you know, you have to expect that, you know, anytime he gets a cough, that may be it. You know, plus his immune system has to be uh, compromised due to the time that he spent in the concentration camps. Well, you know you something? Know, I honestly believe that's why he's 88 years old. OK, yeah. I find the people who have been in extraordinary yeah. circumstances like that seem to live uh, long lives. Longer. Yeah, They're probably yeah. True. I think that something in that situation toughened them up or, or, or guarded them against something, because let's face it, I mean, if Jack went tomorrow, I can't say, oh, he was so young. Why did he have to die? Although my mother did that with a friend of hers who was 92, and my mother was 93, and she said, why did she die? She was so young. And I said, <laughs> really, Mom? You're really saying that? You know, she died at 92, right? I guess you hope for another year. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, mean, I, I would hope that, you know, uh, he would live forever. You know, I love the man, uh, but I I live with the reality that he's not he's not a young man. You know, and that uh, at his age, uh, mm -hmm. hell, a bad cold could get him. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. But uh, but I Especially disagree. I think York. I think the concentration camp is what allowed him to get to be this old. I mean, we always read about people who di who are dying and they were in a concentration camp and they're like ninety two. You know, yeah. so um, whatever. Yeah. So I you know. Uh, that's on my mind a little bit this evening, a lot this evening. Uh, but uh, anyway, so um, uh, so uh, I, so between that and not being able to figure out how to use Skype, is it my age that I can't understand how to do that? Because no, nobody knows. If, have you have any? If, 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 do some homework today for me. Oh, here comes SG again. I'm, I'm going to block him if he doesn't come through this time. No. Well, there it goes. Call failed. Wait a minute. Here he comes. Is it, call failed. SG. I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Here he comes. Here he comes. I think we got him. I think we got him. I don't know what's what's wrong, but he, he he's now he's just whirling around. Are you there, SG? Yes. Yeah. What what's your problem tonight with your with your Skype? You have called us about eight times, and it hasn't worked right. Well, sorry about your friend. No, well, wait a minute. I just asked you a question, though, about the problems you apparently been having with Skype this evening. I'm trying to be, you know, your friend. I'm sorry oh, about your friend. What? Yeah, Skype. Skype has been a, uh, a big part of the conversation tonight. Yeah, but, huh. but no, but what? What? What is your problem been getting on with Skype? You've tried to get on about maybe eight times tonight. Well. You know, it's probably because I, I'm trying to get to a liberal platform, and it's so hard for America to get to a liberal socialist platform that I can't, you know, I can't uh, dial that's it. Through. That's not that's not what I'm asking. That's <laughs> that that that's the joke answer. <laughs> but it's the truth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, no, but I'm I'm just wondering what, what what's been your problem tonight uh, getting on? Just is there a, something wrong with your equipment? Wait a minute, that's yeah, that's Phil's so. problem. Is, wait, uh, let, me, let me let me check my equipment. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> damn it! Damn it! Right. Damn it! My damn equipment. it! Damn it! Damn it! Yeah, but um, uh, you know, I I just find that people who've lived rough lives sometimes live longer. Just because of something you know made him tougher, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, so it's. It, I'll add that to that list. Huh? I'll add to that list. Oh, hey, look at you! You're a you're a walking miracle for Christ's sake, Jeff. <laughs> you know. Better living through technology. Yeah, he's he's it, it, basically he could be the next star of RoboCop. You know, I mean, <laughs> some some good work there, Jeff. 
keeping uh, a lot of doctors. And I'll tell you, we oh. had we had lunch with you. One, we had lunch with you one day, which is my chance to meet you. And uh, you look in, you look in great shape. You don't look like a guy who's you know been pumping iron. I guess that's one way of putting it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it really it, amazing. I think uh, you got some great doctors. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And then you, if, if I lived in Florida, I would have been dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, also you you am I correct? You Jeez. really were part of the the creator of the very thing that saved your life. Um, yeah, some of those things, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could have survived possibly other ways. Yeah, but I mean, this the artificial heart valve, you were involved in, in building them, yeah. right? You know. And, uh, but, you know, I, I ended up uh, taking a drug called Coumadin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And and because of taking that for years and years and years, I ended up having a stroke from that. From that. Oh. And that's that's the worst thing. Is that what is? Are they saying that's what caused the stroke? Yeah, the drug. Oh wow! Is that, is that a class action lawsuit? No, it's kind of like it's. It's, it's, I don't it's, know. it's, it's on the bottle. That's <laughs> right. Oh. It's that, you expected to have a stroke after taking this drug today. No, but what what about the doctors who kept prescribing it to you, knowing that this was an eventuality? Yeah, but it was a, it's that kind of a risky thing, and and yeah. and I would have it tested all the time. That's a blood thinner, right, Coumadin? Yes. By the way, did you see that our president, who I am normally want to say nasty, horrible things about, supposedly. Um, who was it was talking to him? The head of the uh, of uh, Newsmax. I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, Alex uh, Jones? No, 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 no. Oh, no. Uh, Newsmax. Uh, his Newsmax. name is Cutter or something like that. And he yes. is a close friend of Donald Trump's, and he said he saw him this weekend at Mar-a-Lago, and they were talking about something Trump wants to do. Now, if he does this, at least I will say, uh, you know, a stopped watch is right twice a day. He mm -hmm. wants to see us get the same price for drugs that the Canadians do. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah, now, he's been doing, he's yeah. been doing that for years. Really? Yeah, that's part of his platform. Well, that would be a good part of his platform. Yeah. You know, I'd ha I couldn't Why sit here and I, I'd say, "Well, he's still a fucking piece of shit." Except, he's, he's <laughs> you know. hiding the swamp. Not, not, not only that, Alex. He he has he's spearheading a uh, global initiative to make it so countries aren't uh, calling uh, gay people well like, yeah he, 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 he wants to start an initiative to go against countries who have laws against homosexuality yeah. in some cases and those laws stop, those laws why did he, huh then why did he uh, repeal Obama's gays in the military thing now that well transgenders uh, in Trans the military it's, uh, uh, trans transgender yeah uh, you don't go into the military wanting to have, you know, a lot of these people went in there and had operations. You you go in the military, it's it's something that you join to be uniform. Well, to begin with, you're wrong. That, you, you're wrong. You don't join it. You don't join it. You don't join it to go in there and all of a sudden have all these operations and have people treat you differently. It's a uniform operation. No, wait a minute. I think you're wrong. Um, um, uh, uh, SG, and I'll tell you why. Well, you're, you're, uh, no, I'll tell you. Right, I'll tell you. Right. I'll tell you why you're wrong, because th most of the, these transgenders are just cross-dressers. They're not people who want to have an operation to change. It's like their, Klinger, I mesh. They don't. They don't. They don't want to have. Uh, yeah, well, it's like Klinger. Yeah. They don't want to have a, 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 a you know their penis whacked off, or as they do with with with, with uh, women who want to become men. Uh, a, a, an operation called an adedictomy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I really don't care. I really don't care what people do. Yeah. It just when you have something that you want a uniform uh, group of people, that's what you do. Well, there's some people that just want to serve in the military, and 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 yeah. and they happen to also have this. Uh, we won't say problem, this condition, this situation. I don't know what would we call it to be. 
uh, politically correct, uh, but it's not a disease. Uh, yeah, but but a, but they have this problem. Like they that. they have this this situation, and they need uh, help on it. You know, uh, like let well, me get my you don't me join out of your the military face. then huh? because you you're, you're trying to join a uniform organization where there are rules. Well, yes, I mean, but it's, oh. it's not it's not an anti-gay thing. It's like a uniform. Well, to begin with, to begin with, wait a minute, wait a minute. Trans, it's trans. You're trying to yeah. have that, you know. It, it has nothing to do. To, to with begin with, anything. transsexuality has nothing to do with being gay or straight. Okay, it's a it's a condition in and of its own. Uh, uh, See, even even you call it a condition. Well, I'm saying a condition because I haven't got a better word to use. It's a situation. It's not, in other words, uh, the military does not say that you can't be gay and be in the military, right? I didn't say I didn't say nothing about gay. It uh, said Clinton what, said, "Don't when, ask, when, don't tell." Well, then, but then it was amended. I think uh, by the time we got to Obama, with is you can tell it doesn't matter. We don't care. We want you. We need cannon fodder, and you're everyone it. Don't, you know? Everyone don't care. All those people can join, but the 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 point is, you join an organization. You don't join and then have surgery. But they just. I don't know if they just. Nobody surgery. said they were getting surgery like crazy. Sg. Well, you know, I didn't no. say like crazy. No. no. They're going in there, and all of a sudden they're saying we need to do this. And then there's no, they're this, basically what they're what well, they also the drugs, the drugs that what? they wanted to uh, to keep up their uh, their uh, what they needed, uh, regardless of the surgery or not. There are hormone drugs, I guess, that uh, uh, they're very expensive, and the military was on the hook for them. Even 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 forget about the expense. Forget about all this stuff. You know, I could care less what people do. Really, I really could care less. You you've got seems it, like you're bothered you're bothered by it. No, yeah. I'm not bothered by it at all. I think it's I think it's is something that you know some people say. Oh yeah, we should have all these people go in there and blah blah blah. I'm saying when you join an organization, whether it's the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts or the military, you join it knowing that there's this group of rules that you're going to abide by yeah but that but that's not a rule that was never a rule what okay. rule are they that, breaking what rule it's, what rule are they breaking it, sg are, these are guide these are guidelines no wait, it, wait, it, wait, 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 like, wait a minute wait a minute you know, wait a minute sg you're saying there are guidelines and so on where are the guidelines against uh, being right, transsexual or being homosexual I talk over you and gabnet well you talk over Gab me all the time you won't you won't you, you never hold a discussion you just you know, blab on. Oh, uh, that's bullshit, man. And you know it. And why do people join the military? For the same reason it's they. It's a job. <laughs> yes. What is with it tonight? Sometimes somebody like Ray Renati just called, and all of a sudden he he's awesome. uh, doesn't doesn't the call doesn't stick. If he has a question, then I've got if they're in, if they're in the if they join the services, if they were doing anything wrong, they would. It, it's it's not like they're doing anything that they're not allowed to do. If it's in their health plan that they can get whatever they want, hormones or this, it really doesn't affect us. Mm -hmm. well, it, what what is Ray Renati's problem tonight? Oh man, I don't See, get it's this. It's not just exclusive to Republicans. That's a group. There he is. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Hold, hold on a second. Ray, you there? Yeah. Yeah. What, yes, I am. What was your problem getting connected? It kept booting me out. Really? Because we yeah. had that trouble with SG tonight too, but we haven't had that trouble with anybody else. So you know. <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm gonna try. My goal is to get kicked out of the YMCA. <laughs> oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, oh your wife. Yeah. Wor your wife works there. You really want to be uh, an upstart like this? Yeah. Why not? Live, right. live, live. You know, live on the edge. Oh, sorry. My favorite video. Okay. No, it looks like uh, Patrick Blazik hey, is going to try and come out. That's me. I got my mother's cold at night. Yeah. I'm going to spray with Lysol. You know, I, I just say there are people who want to be in the military because they want to serve their country and whatever, sure. and they want to do it in spite of their own particular sexuality. Right. You know, 
uh, and uh, uh, to say that they're doing it because, hey, I know where I can get my operation. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> You know, I'm that. sorry. No, I did not say that. Well, that's what you were implying. No, I was not implying that. I mean, I would sign up for the military just for the free medical benefits, you know. You period. Already have them. People do. Huh? They do. They and do. they do. And they do. Hello, Patrick. Hola. How you doing? I am tip top. Be You're always you always when I ask you that question, you never say oh, I'm all fucked. My life sucks. <laughs> you know, you're not like I love Pat. You're, you're not like me. You know, my 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 uh, glass is always half empty. You know, just just remember every day, uh, uh, you know, life is a shit sandwich, and every day is another bite. <laughs> That's true. Every every second you're a witch. You're to dying so well i i think i started my life by knowing that be, i was i was just born and that means i'm starting to die i was ready yeah i'm with you i don't, I don't like thinking about it yeah i don't yeah, either i want to live long no it's terrible i've been really depressed about it lately because you know i have people around me dying I, you know yeah, uh, it's gotta be tough yeah although i'll tell you a story here yeah years ago uh, and I think I told the story with uh, Bubbles tonight. I worked in uh, Cl uh, in uh, Klamath Falls, Oregon, and uh, as a side job, I worked for a radio consultant named Ted Randall. Ted Randall had to be, I don't know, I don't know how many more years older than me, but all I know is he had been a disc jockey in San Francisco for quite a while at a station called KOBY. And um, uh, he was a consultant and uh, to many, many stations, and he hired me to do like the imaging for these stations, you know, the tapes we would send out where I would say, you're listening to blah, 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 best hits anywhere, whatever. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I've got this guy, um, uh, David, uh, uh, what's his name again? Uh, David J uh, Jackson over at uh, the Bay Area Radio Archives. And he, oh no, here comes this Richard Johansson again trying to call in. Let's see. No, I can't get him to oh, add. Alex, something seems wrong with Skype. Yeah, I, like my video is not working and I can't even turn it on or off. Really? Because we can see you fine. No. I'm sorry. I'm going to have oh, okay. to hang up. No, I'm going to have to hang up on Richard Johansson. Uh, but anyway, uh, everybody else is getting a good picture, right? Yeah. yeah. Then I think it's just Ray's bandwidth, but he's coming through loud and clear. Anyway, where was I? Um, and so um, this guy, I don't know, he had to be at least 10 years older than me, maybe more. Oh, come on, Richard. Come on. Uh, see, I, I click add to group, and he doesn't add to group. There's something wrong with him. How come that Barhoff organization was posting stuff? They posted a picture of you. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. And, because and some I've, KTIS stuff, and I sent it to you. Did, did anyone else send it to you? KTIM stuff. No, I have it all. Oh, I, I know, but I, I but he I found what you. what happened was uh, anyway about this Ted Randall. So I looked him up. The guy is still alive. He's living in Canada. It's not like being alive. He's in Canada, but you know he's alive. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's the first good news I've had in a while. You know, right. it's somebody that I would just assume was dead by now is still alive. It's hope. Yeah. That's, um, that's why I call into this program. I know it's getting old. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. But I, uh, the, what, what Phil is referring to is uh, he, uh, David was posting a lot of stuff on my uh, Facebook page that he had found because he's like an archivist, you know. And what he found was. This was posted on the Barhoff page. Yeah, it was also on the Barhoff page. But he also put on my page and, and sent to me a link to a audio tape that was done by Roy Trumbull and myself hosting a show out of a teenage nightclub in San Rafael, California. It had to be circa about 19, I don't know, 57, 56, wow. I don't know when. It's maybe the earliest tape of myself I can lay my hands on. There may be one other. And uh, he found it. I don't know. Somebody had it. Somebody oh, over in God. Oakland who had some kind of archives. And I, I don't know how it wound up there. Maybe Roy Trumbull gave it to him or whatever. But there I am, Jerry Bennett, uh, the teenage disc jockey. It's amazing. Wow. Just amazing. They find, you know, live long enough, and on the Internet you can find anything. Sure. Okay. 
Um, so uh, that's that's my story for that. So hope it. Yes, uh, Patrick. Um, one of our uh, local uh, talk show hosts on the radio. Mm -hmm. He's about sixty-three years old. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a stroke while he was on the air last Monday. Mm. Oh wow! Oh really? Yeah, and I the only reason I bring it up is you know you had talked to talking about dying and that sort of thing. Well, he had very minimal damage. He'll be back to work after some rehab. But, I mean, talk about a weird thing. He did a <laughs> hour of his show, and then they went into break, and he had a stroke. So, wow. Uh, it reminds he, me. He drove himself to the hospital. Wait a minute. It reminds I, me I, that uh, newscaster, uh, that reporter that was on television having a stroke while she was being interviewed and she was just started to say gibberish uh and yeah she just yeah she had a stroke yeah. while she was on the air you could find it if you if you uh youtube it and she just started saying gibberish and they were like oh, what's going on she turns out she had a stroke while doing a report hey, by the way i just found i just found this this is that this is that tape that he put up there i won't play the whole thing i'll just play the first couple of minutes uh, first minute or so of it so you can hear jerry bennett uh and, and 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 listen to this. This is they they found this. I don't know where. I don't even remember. Re hand, I don't even remember recording the goddamn thing. Wait a minute. Let's see. Stage. Welcome to the Cloud Eight Show, coming to you tape recorded from Marin County's only teenage nightclub. And now here's your Cloud Eight MC, Jerry Bennett. This is embarrassing. Thanks a lot, Roy Trumbull, and welcome down here to the Cloud 8. And we think you can have a real ball today. In case you're wondering where the Cloud 8 is, it's located at 508B 4th Street in San Rafael. And if you dig down here any Friday or Saturday, you're bound to find happening what's happening right now. Jam session. Tonight we got two real fine groups to perform for you over the air. First of which is the Starlighters, who you're going to hear much of tonight, and you're also going to hear a little bit about what they're going to be doing just very soon. Right now, what do you say we start off with the man you're hearing right now, Mr. John Allaire and his version of Fever. Anyway, so there you go, folks. Huh? How about that? How about so that? Every, 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 awesome. it sounds like you. That was you, great. You dialed into what people wanted to hear, the kind of action, right? No, I was just I was just trying to I was just trying. Every time you you kind of you morph into what you think is popular, which is great. Right? I didn't morph into anything there. That's where I started. That wasn't morphing. No, I mean, but you 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 did that because you knew it was popular. Oh, by the way, uh, Johansson just wrote me. He was been trying to call in from Bangkok. So, what? who's the Thailand guy? Yeah, who knows what the problem a, is? Yeah. yeah, it was the Thailand guy. Uh, yeah. No, that was the beginning. That was me metamorphosizing into anything. You know, that was first shot. It, well, it wasn't my first shot, but that was close to it. You know, and I think we did that as kind of a prospect show. We, you know, it was a kind of a pilot idea for some show we wanted to do but we, it never got broadcast um that that's it's my it just recollection did. of it yeah but did that sound anything wait a minute, did, did that sound anything like me yes yeah, yeah. really yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the intonations i could tell it was you uh, yeah. yeah wow okay yeah. i would say it's better than you are now <laughs> oh Thanks, fuck you, SG. <laughs> That's good. Always, always, always like it when SG calls. I get to feel better about myself after the show, you know. Um, but uh, uh, now you, you were, you were in the groove, man. You were in the groove. <laughs> you had that that fifties feeling that. You know, I, I listen to that stuff all the time. I think you were in the groove. I, I was in the group. Isn't there still a club there? No. Uh, oh, no. There's something. It's on 4th oh, Street? Oh, no. It was, no, I, it wasn't on 4th Street. It was down near near San Rafael High School. Oh. It was on the other side of the freeway. Just, 
the other there's, side of the freeway. There's something in San Rafael. Yeah. Some, uh, some jazz club or uh, I'll have to look, uh, see if I can find it. Yeah, yeah. That was good. Well, uh, yeah, sure. Thank you very much, SG. I listened to it and I'm embarrassed by it. No, 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 no. But I thought yeah. it's that it's that sound. If you have a if you have any kind of old CD that you put in your uh, you know whatever, and you listen to people like yourself doing that kind of stuff, it, it it's kind of nostalgic and great. Well, there are two people uh, on that show that I know are dead: Roy Trumbull, my friend who did the introduction <laughs> and, and recorded it. And remember, I've told you about this this black friend of mine in oh, Marin yeah. City. His name was Matty Barron, and Matty Barron is on that show. I talked to him. Um, he died in a drowning accident off Rich, in Richardson Bay. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, it, it just it, it's it's uh, it's uh, that was how many years ago? Boy. God, da damn it. it! It's yeah. The place I was thinking of is called the Phoenix, and it's at nine nineteen. No, no. This Street. was this was this was a club that lasted about six months, and that was it. You nah, know. you were you, you weren't were even good. alive, Phil. Like, or maybe you were. You were good. That was good. But uh, thank you, SG. I appreciate it. That's the pilot for our new show here on Gabnet. I think we'll <laughs> yeah, right. we'll see if we can go for a second episode. Okay. So, Rob Alfano, how's everything in your part, of yeah. your, your neck of the woods? Good. Very good. Uh, we're going to get some major snow tomorrow. Yeah. But um, can't complain. Just yeah. um, personal crap going on. Mom going. It just went into a assisted living. and. Oh, boy. Yeah. Is, why assisted not living? It, it, why assisted living? Is she uh, not capable of taking care of herself? Dementia. She dementia. doesn't even know where she is anymore. Oh, uh, my mother had dementia. Yeah. yeah, she's she's to the point now where, and she's in a beautiful place. I mean, man, oh man, what a really nice. It's like a hotel. Well, I put my mother in the home, the Jewish home for the aged, in San Francisco, which was really nice. You know, yeah. uh, they had like three hundred patients in there and three hundred people who worked there. That's how. Uh, you yeah. know, it, how These good places it was. are gorgeous, but yeah. it's what seven thousand dollars a month. The mine for my mother was seven thousand dollars a month until we used up all her money, right? And then uh, they said, Not this place. When they we use up her money, she's got to go. Well, in, you don't it, have to it, go home, it, but you can't stay there with the Jewish home <laughs> for the aged. Um, they use up, I had to literally write over all her money. She had about $35,000 and they ate away at that at nine, at, at maybe $7,000 a month. And when that was gone, they said, there's no way we will throw her out of here. In other words, we'll find other patrons to take care of her, her bill or her tab, but we never throw anybody out of here once they get in. It was kind of like at the end of her life, getting her into Harvard, you know, I mean, it was that, that kind of situation. <laughs> Here comes Richard right. Johansson again, but I bet I bet we can't get him to. No, I can't get him to. I hit add to group call, and it will not add him to the group call. Isn't that terrible? So, mm. I can be a little bit positive about this situation, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. My daughter does uh, music ther therapy for Alzheimer's mm -hmm. patients. Oh, wow. And the music therapy, music is something that these folks has been shown scientifically. Yes, I know. I was re 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 seeing a thing about it the other day. Right. Yeah. They cling on to, and I would implore anyone that has a uh, someone, a loved one in that situation, that they have some kind of music therapy, old thing. And she said that they could do barely anything, but when she sang the songs, the people sang the songs. And they clung on to it, and it was like them bringing them back to life. Music memory, according to the thing that I saw, is exactly what you're saying. The music memory is very, very, uh, uh, very strong, and uh, and it's okay. a, it's a, it's a great way to bring them around. They they relate to the music. They can remember a song. If you if you saw the uh, Glenn Campbell special of his last concert tour while he 
was suffering with all with Alzheimer's. He couldn't. He was a babbling idiot when he wasn't on stage. But give him his songs to sing, and and you know when he stopped singing, he would say some wacky things, but the crowd understood. But when he put that guitar in his hand and he started singing his songs, it's just amazing. Yeah, but he he I remember I seeing was, that he couldn't remember a song he just played though. Exactly. Yeah. But he also had to have the words. He had to have a teleprompter. But he could play the guitar perfectly. But man, unbelievable! As if nothing ever happened. And he's a great didn't guitar have player. Frank Sinatra have those uh, issues, and but he couldn't remember the words. Oh uh, well, no, he used Almost a teleprompter. Gets to that point. He look. I mean, I I think if I, you know, I I, I I'm having some problems lately that are bothering <clears> me. You know. Uh, but and it's things that I do every day, and then all of a sudden I forget how to do them, you know. Uh, and I don't know if that's that or that I'm just so tired of doing those same things every day. You, you don't know, want to remember that, that. Yeah, that I block out on them. But I, I'm still able to, I guess. You know, continue, but you know. Yeah. But as, as soon as I can any longer, I, you know, it, it's interesting that I'm wondering if, you know, I keep talking about this Skype problem that I can't figure out how you get another person. Al, on. yeah, I have to cut it short because my mother needs me. Why she needs to? She, <laughs> I don't she, want to tell you. She what needs I, to. I, she needs to change yeah. the wallpaper. I, no, you, you know what happened? The blanket's not hot enough. <laughs> the what? The warm. She's got a heating blanket. I got well, a heating blanket. I got a foot stick on. She's got the window open. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm cold, but now I'm hot. The window's open. I closed the window. Close I, the window. Turn the blanket down. I know, but she's making me. Either like, that, if you're cold. getting really sick and tired of this, turn it on high and just pray. You yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> sing her a song. <laughs> short, short it out. Now, was he leaving us or? Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't hang up. He didn't hang up, so I'm going to just assume he's coming back. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, I just uh, it, um, it, it, it it taking care of an old person when they get Alzheimer's is a real problem. And I always like to tell the story that the worst thing I ever did, and uh, I'm sure you won't do this with your mother, Rob, after I tell you this story. But my, I told my mother, I said, Mom, I'm going to be gone for a month or so. I'm going to New York. And she said, oh, well, say hello to my parents. Yeah, my yeah. mother does that all the time. And yeah. I said that to her, good. Mom, your parents are dead. And she started wailing and crying and going <laughs> into a fit like, she, like the first time she found out her parents were dead. Yeah. Happens. You know, and I realized that you just, <laughs> You just go. I certainly will, <laughs> you know. Right. You always pretend that sure. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So when I start babbling hey, like that, please don't tell me somebody's dead. Just say, "Oh yeah, sure, Alex, fine." Okay. Right. Hey, Alex, can you hear me? Yeah, I can oh. hear you. I just wanted to say I, I used to love it when you had your mom on the show years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Many years ago, it was so fun. <laughs> I really loved those. Segments. Well, the thing that I found out, uh, I, we they were going to do. They did a roast for me, um, and they asked her to appear. Uh, but Kevin Pollack put it together, and uh, they held a roast for me, and they asked my mother to appear. And so my mother said, "Okay, well, I'll get up there and I'll say something." And she always acted like she. It, Oh, well, it, I'll see if I can. I don't know if I can. And what I said to her was, I said, Mom, don't worry about it. She said, what am I going to say? I said, say anything. I said, you're 80 years old. Anything you say, they will laugh at. And I was right. I mean, every time she'd get up there, go, and my son, Dan, you know, she'd use my, my real name, and they'd all laugh. <laughs> you know, I mean, she could... Uh, do anything, and she would get a laugh just because she was old. Yeah, you know. Well. So, uh, but my and my mother wasn't particularly a funny person. My father was the funny person, but but she was just funny because she and was old. You know what? You're you're come on. She was old. She was endearing. And everybody always told me what a gee, your mother is so sweet and wonderful. And I said that's because she's. I said that's because she's your mother. <laughs> 
I said, uh, to be her son is hell on earth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. But, man, oh, man. But Ray remembers me having her on the air, and I never hesitated for a moment to put her on the air because she would always get a laugh. Sure. It's like Letterman's mom. Remember that? Uh, yeah, I exactly. I Good example. Good example. Uh, you know. And I hear she was not the nicest human being in the world, but she came off very sweet on the air, you know. Uh, and, uh, uh, and he would send her to the Olympics, and he would do the, the Thanksgiving thing, you know. Yeah, use your mother. Your mother will always get a laugh, you know. So, anyway. Hi, Patrick. You're quiet tonight. You're quiet tonight. Oh, I love you, too. Uh um, anything you'd like to bring up tonight, Patrick? Not particularly. I mean, uh, I guess if anything, I, I find what's happening with the Democrats now that uh, Bernie had jumped into the pool. That's a mistake. That's an independent. Everybody having a fucking stroke over it. I just think it's hilarious. I think it's as funny as the Republican side in 2016, mm -hmm. where we had 900 of them, and you know it's, it's the same deal. And and I on Facebook, some of my left-leaning folks who like to post about politics, uh, they're just having a stroke over this. And there are a couple of them that are Bernie or Bust people, and they're getting that are anti. Yeah. Oh, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Charlie's Somebody out. needs to mute. Charlie? Charlie. Charlie. Can you hear us, Charlie? Charlie? Charlie, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Charlie? He can't even hear us, so I can't tell him to mute. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, it, so you say they were getting apoplectic. They were all for Bernie, like running. Well, the ones that are all in for Bernie are getting skewered by one that don't want Bernie in it because they don't want it uh, divided. If we gotta all stick together, so we can get rid of Trump. Well, uh, Bernie. There's one, there's one Democrat. Will vote for a Republican if it's not Trump, just to get Trump out. So mm -hmm. I'm having fun reading my Facebook now after a while. Uh, it's been pretty boring, and now that not Bernie's in, it's pretty entertaining for me. Yeah. There's well, two independents now. You got Schultz and you got Bernie Sanders. And uh, those guys, uh, you know, they'll, they'll take votes away from the de Democratic mm -hmm. runner. Uh, and, you know, the other thing that I've been noticing with the Democrats is on the Smollett story, uh, the ones that jumped to uh, the conclusions that uh, that he was attacked, and now they're finding out it was a hoax, uh, they're, they're uh, well, using well, a Wait a minute. Hold like, on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. Where did you hear the first idea thrown across that this thing looked fishy? Uh, it's... A, I did well. Uh, you heard it from did, me. Yeah, you heard it from me. I said this on the show the other night that this th whole thing looked a little phony baloney to me, and I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that it's a hoax. I guess uh, you're right. And I was very careful about phrasing it because I didn't want people to get apoplectic and whatever over it. But it just the whole thing from the very beginning smelled. Yeah. You know, is that necessarily a political issue? Isn't it more just like whether or not? Well, he, 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 I mean, he, he is a very divisive. He turned it into a he, he, very divisive. He turned it. Right he now. turned it into a political. He tried to turn it into a political issue. Oh, I see. And, the mega hat. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was uh, it looks mm -hmm. like now the whole thing was a phony that it was rehearsed. And it's interesting to see all the people who sided with Jesse, Jesse is his name, Jesse Smollett, uh, uh, publicly, who are suddenly now getting very quiet. Nancy Pelosi was one of them. She wrote Sharpen. like a, huh? 
Yeah. Al Sharpton and also uh, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Uh, if Richard jo Johansson is listening, no, jo Richard, it isn't a full house. And if somebody else called, we might not have a problem. But you've got a problem because you're probably calling from Bangkok is what the problem is. Yes, Patrick. Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring up Al Sharpton on that because I read um, that he stated that it just is a hoax that he hopes that uh, Jesse gets the maximum for, you know, wasting, you know, the time Resources. and that. Resources. I agree. And my question to that hypocritical fuck. Yeah. What Tawana Brawley. Backing those, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, where's the fucking apology for that? That fucking can suck my ass. Yeah, but and I still agree with that statement. What? what? If, it, if it's a oh, fake. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he, it, it, the statements. The statements fine, uh, but uh, he's been uh, known to. Oh, he's, uh, he's, and I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I don't know. I didn't pay any attention to him, but I'm sure he got behind Smollett when this first happened. Just like uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, I think, put out a tweet uh, uh, being on Smollett's side, and now she's not saying anything. It's radio silence, you know. Uh, but. Uh, and Spike Lee, where's Spike Lee saying you fuck? This, this <laughs> you happened know? in Chicago. Huh? I don't think I, this happened in Chicago. I don't think Smollett's going to have one day in jail. Uh, I, I, think, they, I, I think I think I, I, well, I don't know if he's going to have one day in jail or he's going to or he's going to have have any kind of you know because he can get maybe a good lawyer and they can make a case and he's never had a crime before and blah 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 you know whatever. But he yeah. is good. There is going to be a trial. You bet your Supposedly life there's going to be a fucking 12 trial. Twelve detectives, twelve in Chicago working Talk about on waste. This. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's a the, other, the disingenuous thing that he said when he was interviewed by uh, who was it, Robin uh, Givens, or is that who it was? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the uh, GMA. Yeah, he said he doesn't want to be one of those people that would fake something because then it would take away from the actual victims or something like that. And I started laughing when I heard that because I thought, I think this is a hoax anyway. And if what you said, you're, you're, you're going against exactly what it is that you're stating. But you don't want to uh, minimize real victims by creating a, a fake uh, attack. And that's exactly what he did. Well, what's funny is he is somebody said to me, uh, gee, um, he seems so convincing on Good Morning America. And I said, he's, he's an actor. He's an actor. <laughs> right. And he was getting thrown puffball questions. Oh, yeah, because uh, she didn't want to rob him, whatever her name is. Uh, did, didn't want to ask him the hardball questions because she wanted to seem sensitive to the situation. So that, that was like a slam dunk interview for him. Everybody was afraid. Here's the problem. Everybody was afraid, except I guess for me, to say this thing smells bad. It doesn't pass the smell test. Uh, and can you hear us now, Charles? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Skype went out on me. Wow. Uh, anyway, yes, uh, Ray. Ray? Oh, your, your mic isn't on, Ray. Oh. There. Well, it's cutting in and out. Okay, there we go. There we go. I have a bad connection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, if you look at the pictures of him in the hospital, it looks like he just went through like an, an afternoon of uh, sparring with a friend. Uh, his little tiny scratch on his cheek. Uh, if when someone gets mugged, their eyes are all black. There's contusions all over their face. If anyone puts a rope around your neck, it's gonna look horrible. I mean, it's a big hoax. Yeah, but either he, fa either he faked it or somebody else did, and he didn't know right away. But Something everybody happened. in the media, everybody in the media was treating this thing with kit gloves. Nobody was saying, well, you know, this thing. That all they had to say was. 
Well, yes, he says this, but, you know, so far there's no proof, so we don't know. Something doesn't look right here, one way right. or another. But nobody was saying that. They were all siding with him. Oh, look what happened to poor Jussie. Oh, and all the people on the TV show were going, this is horrible. And Fox was yeah. standing behind him and all of that. Well, now Fox is saying, uh, we want you to cut his scenes down on the last couple of episodes. Like he, uh, for the last episode, which they were shooting, he had like nine scenes. They cut him down to four. Uh, they've gone back and re-edited some of the shows that are supposed to run now and kind of not cut him out of it, but shaved him down. And, and the, this all from the people who, 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 who three days ago, well, no, they were, they were all afraid because this was a racial issue, okay? This was a racial issue, and they didn't want to come down on the wrong side of it. But uh, from the day I heard the story, I felt it didn't smell right. So what he you know, what he shows up with a noose around his neck from a from a yeah. little piece of like like uh, it looked like it was a cord from a uh, from a, right. uh, a, a what do you call it a clothesline you know, clothesline like, rope. No yeah. one would leave it on. It's I think yeah. Phil 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 was more convincing just now. <laughs> yeah, Patrick. The the thing that I thought was interesting is Chicago and Milwaukee we're having the same weather mm -hmm. and when that happened it was so goddamn cold here in milwaukee and i know it was colder in chicago mm -hmm. what i don't care if they're white supremacists and they hate homosexual blacks there's nobody that would be laying in wait in that type of weather for such a long time for the possible event that that guy could have been coming home at some point. I mean, you wait well, for I might, I might. Really? But here, here you, did you hear what, what, what the, one of the, the funnier parts of the story are? Just that kidding. they decided to do this thing where there was one of those city cameras oh. so they could have it on camera. And, and it, it, well, no, what happened was... The, the camera had been turned and was facing in another direction, so they had no proof. Right. And on the interview, yeah. the interview, he pointed out, you know, I the, I noticed that there was a camera up there, and oh, unfortunately, it was out. Like he knew it was there. Yeah, he knew it was there. They they did he it in this. It. They did it in this exact place because there was a camera there. The only yeah. thing was, it yeah. wasn't pointing where they were doing the action. Yeah. And he pretended as though he oh, saw so the he... camera after the fact. So they probably really staged it then. Yeah. Oh, like, oh it absolutely. absolutely. We're going to find out. The camera showed the two guys that did it uh, in the area. That's how they found those guys. Uh, you know, before yeah. the attack, I guess they were there. And, and the camera picked and up. And how they them. found out it was a fake was because these guys didn't want to be held to account for having beaten him up or whatever. So oh, they well, said, I mean, here's what went on. We rehearsed this thing. We did this because he. I don't. They know, were he was paid to do it. He, he, he thirty five hundred bucks. Yeah. Shit. Money, money well, he, money well spent. And he was not actually beat up. I you see him. He was not beat up. Uh, also, also the, the Covington Catholic uh, guy. The boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was a whole. Now they have a two hundred fifty million dollar. Uh, Suit against the Washington Post. Another rush to judgment, you know. And you know, if you if you look at the film, the the guy who's the Indian guy mm -hmm. walks into their group. They're standing there, and if you if you pan out, and it's on the Lincoln Memorial, he is all he can go all the way around them or be ten feet away from well, them. Well, I when I saw that, I'm and I hate to sound like SG. But when I saw that, I felt this guy was really the guy who was in their face. They weren't in his face. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, smug, the smug look on the kid. I didn't think it was around. a smug look. It looked like he was. this guy was staring him in the face, and he didn't know how to react. So he just kind of yeah, had this look on his face. But it was, look he was uncomfortable. Was for it, people to jump on well, him. It, became, it became a... Um, uh, a case of everybody interpreting that video in the way that they politically wanted to uh, interpret it. And how I interpreted it, not trying to have any feel about it, was 
I felt that this Indian was actually coming up and, and staring yeah. him down rather than right. the other way around. Right. And, and uh, uh, the, um, I don't know, I just felt, uh, and then I saw the, 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 the uh, Native American being interviewed on television, and he was doing everything he could to get publicity out of it. Right. Uh, you know, if you're if you're an aggrieved person like that, you don't want to get publicity, but you want to explain your part of it. But instead, it looked like he was trying to get publicity. And I said, I don't know. I kind of, you know, I I you know, the, these are just a bunch of kids who didn't know what they were. And there were other people what? protesting it. And, and uh, 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 the, the, the clash was between them, class. between the uh, what is it? The the. The black Jews or whatever they black, were. Uh, I don't black, think, well, he, black Hebrew Israelites. Not only that, if you look at the if you look at the uh, video before that, they are calling they are calling out the Native Americans. They're making fun of the Native Americans before this whole thing ever started. And you know what, Alex? <clears throat> Who was making fun of them? The black group. Well, yes, yeah. The, 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 they, they were uh, being very aggressive. Yeah. Or but, toward toward the uh, Native Americans, but then when they went in, but, you know, I, I And also I those kids, they were being aggressive to those kids. But I wanna, I wanna say, Alex, thank you for saying the, the thing that you hate most is to sound like me, and that's like my biggest badge of honor. Yeah, tonight. yeah, no, absolutely, it, 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 yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I, I agree with you on, on, on your take on that situation, you know, uh, and I, it bothered me a great deal. Uh, it's you know. a shame that somebody would hate that. But, uh, th but now getting back to the Smollett thing, quite frankly, I think he should be, he should, number one, have to pay for all the cops' time oh, yeah. that was taken to do this. It's oh, a felony. Don't, Richard, don't try again. Here, it doesn't happen. I put add to group. I don't think he can hear you I, while he's trying. Well, I, I hit <laughs> add to group, and uh, it, uh, it doesn't, doesn't add him. You know. I'm going to call him back, then you'll have a full house. If I call but, him back, you know, uh, nothing happens. Watch what happens. But the, but the, Add to group this, call. Think about okay. This, Alex. I mean, think about this. Uh, okay. You're, you're, uh, he, you're, a kid, he, you're he, a kid and you're 16 years old, and all of a sudden people are wanting your you, you to be killed. Now, I'm. it's trying to call him, by the way. Okay. But it, yeah, I just got a call from him, and I tried to answer it, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't you know, take. The, the, the it, the, back to the Covington thing, and I know you want to concentrate on the smaller thing, but those kids are being are being asked to be punched out, to be to be literally killed mm -hmm. by people. I haven't seen anybody calling for them to be killed. Give me a break. They were saying that they should be suspended. Uh, there, there was uh, uh, their school even uh, jumped to uh, rush to judgment on them. Uh, and uh, you know, said that they were intimidating the uh, Vietnam era uh, veteran. Yeah, he was a uh, never served in Vietnam. He was in uh, uh, Colorado or something or Wyoming, and he yeah. was a uh, oh, refrigerator. Yeah, His MOS was okay. uh, refrigerator yeah. repair. Really? Was, yeah, refrigerator repair. Yeah. Getting but, it, you know, I, I just, uh, um, uh, a lot of times these, we're living in a mediaized age where people are trying to get publicity, okay? And they want to be first. They want to be true. first and not accurate. What do you mean? They want, uh, yes, Patrick. I, I do want to say I give a lot of credit to the Chicago Police Department yes. for doing this as a real item. Mm -hmm. And being very thorough, they went through every camera and everything so that, one, they can't get sued for some off-the-wall thing that they ignored. And two, with all of the evidence laid out, nobody can say the Chicago police didn't do their job. True. So they, well, they, they did they... a good YA on it. And like you said, Alex, uh, with the CYA, it'd be good for Smollett to be paying for it. Yeah, uh, I don't think he should go to jail. I think he should have the financial responsibility. Listen, I, I don't think going to jail is even needed here. This guy is no longer in show business, okay? It, 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 he needs to go to jail. That's the, that's the best thing that ever happened to that show. 
Yeah. He needs to go to jail. Have you ever watched the show, Phil? No. Then how do you know that's the best thing ever well, happened to the show? I understood that the uh, that, uh, the show's plot lines had been getting skinnier and skinnier, and that uh, it was probably coming to the end of the line. And with all this publicity, uh, it is mm -hmm. what I said was it's probably the best thing that ever happened for that show because uh, it will get uh, additional viewers. No, if you have, if you have, you know, a felony is like fifteen hundred dollars. If you have twelve detectives who have been pulled off the the force for a while, you you are in a felony. You go to jail, and he's facing three to twenty years. He should face. He should get three years. He should get probation, and he should go to jail. No. Uh, uh, let me let me ask Charles. Hold on a second. A let me, Char Charlie. Uh, do you ever watch Empire? I, I, I know that's kind no, of a racist I watched the question. First two shows and, huh? And then I watched the first two shows and decided it wasn't my kind of show. Yeah. But uh, what do you think of this situation as a. Uh, I hadn't heard all this. Last I heard, the police were saying there was nothing that, that they saw that indicated that he faked it. Now, that was over the now, weekend. Now they've. So no, now like, the guys, the guys that they, that they arrested, who supposedly were in on it, said that it was all a hoax. That in fact they had rehearsed the whole thing and they explained it and okay. uh, I hadn't heard that. And the police have decided now to charge Jesse Smollett with uh, what's the word fake uh, fake re police report and uh, mail fraud. It's and a they, re they released those guys. Huh? They released them. They released, they released them. the yeah. two guys. Yeah. 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 One of the guys was an extra on uh, that show. Yeah. Yeah, I saw and, that. Yeah. That they had, had and the other guy, I think, is his well, train. He, here trainer. was the here was the point. At, here here before, was the yeah. point at which I realized that it probably was a phony, is when they said that this these guys they had arrested. One of them was an extra on Empire. Yeah. Where do they yeah. shoot Empire? I don't know. L A. Yeah. L A. What were they doing in Chicago? Oh, yeah, that is true. And I said to myself, they went out there to do whatever this was. Okay. Maybe they were originally from Chicago because one of them was uh, Smollett's personal trainer and their brothers, and one of them uh, was an extra on the show. So maybe they were friends of Smollett. All I'm saying is my question was, it's a long way from L.A. to Chicago. What yeah. were they doing on a break from the show going to Chicago? It was obviously to be with Smollett. Yeah, you know. Yes, Patrick. The other thing that I had heard was one of the guys um, went. I I guess they went into the apartment of the uh, two guys that they mm -hmm. arrested. Yeah, and found um, evidence of that letter that Smollett yes. supposedly gotten with all of their letters cut out from the magazine the yeah. magazine yeah. they had the magazines with the letters cut out of it already yeah yeah, yeah. So, I mean, holy shit yeah. he's got a lot of time on his hands yeah well this is it, it, uh, supposedly the motive here yeah was that he had written a letter i think to fox complaining about something about race or something and he'd been completely ignored and so he wanted to do something to make them pay attention just be a better criminal. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to do something like that, don't be so fucking dumb about it. To begin with, <laughs> yeah. you've um, got a career. Why fuck it up by doing something like this? Up. You know, uh, it's just stupid. It makes no sense. He's just not bright. Well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you know. like, even the cops, like, um, this guy, he has to be a schmo. You know, uh, I I can't see. Are they going to recast his part or no? Who knows what they're going to do? <laughs> he didn't have a very no, big part. I understand. Was it a white guy? <laughs> I, he, I don't he, think he had a very. No, big he part. had a fairly big part. He performed on the show. He did songs and things like that. And he was the son of the of the family, and he appeared on almost every episode in one way or another. No, he did not have a small part. Alex. Yeah. You think the news would go crazy if they recast him with a white guy? <laughs> Holy shit! We better string him up. Yeah. Well, you know, I just, I just, it's, a white guy in black face. It's amazing how there's Man, how all crazy. the people that defended him in tweets and said what an outrage this was in tweets. 
they've all of a sudden gone into radio silence. You know, they're it's, planning to beat him up for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. If you really, if you really look at it, yeah. You know, it's it's he probably didn't realize the magnitude of what the problem was. Mm-hmm. So on that case, I, I almost don't want to prosecute him. But mm-hmm. when you look at the money that it costs, when you look at the resources, when you look at all this other stuff, mm-hmm. it becomes kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It does become a, a, a big deal. Yes, Patrick. Kind of like a wall. Yeah. And the other thing is, I don't know if everybody on here saw those two Nigerian guys. If they wanted to beat somebody up, they could have beaten that guy to a <laughs> I mean, for rip. And no way that that little scratch had on his face. That's my point. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was not beat up. I like that one, that one guy's that they, abs. I want that one guy's abs. That do guy. you think that they were related to that Nigerian prince that's always sending everybody an email probably, trying to give probably. away $100 billion? It says here, it says here, Empire actor Je- Jesse Smollett, who reported be a victim, blah, 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 may have staged the attack because he was upset at the lukewarm reaction to a racist letter that was sent to the show's studio the previous week. Um, he, probably he, he, he said that uh, when the, the letter didn't get enough attention, he concocted the staged attack. Um, the letter, which was received uh, January 22nd at Chicago's Cinespace Studios, targeted Smollett with racial and homophobic threats, the report notes. The letter, which contained a white powder and prompted a hazmat response is being investigated by the FBI. By the way, it reportedly turned out to be aspirin. I think Smollett uh, probably, probably sent the letter. To yes, he did. The so blockbuster revelation this into state. this, at least part of uh, Smollett's potential motive comes two days after CBS Charlie DeMar, DeMar reported Smollett and two brothers Ola and Abel Usandaro uh, staged the attack. Uh, DeMar spoke on the phone exclusively with uh, the brothers Monday afternoon in a joint statement. They said, we are not racist, we are not homophobic, and by the way, we are not anti-Trump. Well, I say hang them then. Uh, we were born and raised in Chicago and American citizens. They're not Nigerians, as is previously reported. So, With a last name like Osambaro? Oh, they, they're not it, Irish either. Did you pronounce it correctly? Maybe you did. I didn't. I, I don't know. Wow, that was good. Osandairo. Osandairo? Osandairo. Something like that. Uh, the guy's guilty. Yeah. Well, they're not oh, descendants of slaves. That's all. Well, let's no, not let's not say he's like, let's prince. not let's not rush to judgment and say he's guilty. He needs to be tried first. But it sure looks it looked to me to be stinky from the beginning. And I said it here on this program, but I was careful in the way in which I said it. I said it just something just doesn't smell right. Didn't I say that, Rob? Yeah. You said Do you remember me saying it? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I was here when you said it. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's I the first time right I knew there was any question is when you said that. I, I thought there was well, no question. Well, I figured, you see, I figured he did it for political reasons, that he wanted to make a political point because he's very much, you know, pro-gay rights and pro-black and all of that. And I figured maybe he was doing it to make a point. Sure. You know, but that the, that it certainly didn't, it didn't pass the smell test for being an actual attack. That little sissy cut he had on his face. I mean, he could have done that with a ring. He didn't take his watch, <laughs> wallet, or his sandwich. Did he have a sandwich? <laughs> hey, did he have a sandwich? Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. Had a sandwich. And the whole attack was outside the field of the camera. Well, so, it was supposed to be within the field of the camera, so they could then. Huh? Did he even lose a tooth or anything? A chipped tooth? Oh no, no, no nothing. You know. No. By the way, I want to mention, I, I, I mean to mention this all night, Ray Renati's T-shirt, which I love. You know he's an actor. And his shirt well, reads, the green thing, show, him the, show him the shirt. Stand up, stand say? up like you are when you're, yeah. There we go. Oh, my Call agent. my agent. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. There he is, folks. You still have an agent? It needs a phone number, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, me, let me get my phone. Do you, ha- do you have an agent, Ray? 
I do. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, look, talent. What's her name? Uh, <clears throat> Joan Spangler. Uh, Joan Spangler. I know Joan yeah. Spangler. Yeah. 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 I figured you would. Yeah. 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 She's my agent. She just sent me on a movie audition last week. Uh -huh. I don't think I got the part, but. But wow. what? What was the <laughs> movie? I, I heard was... that uh, interview that the There's Irish a, a guy did with sag. you. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was excellent. Excellent. <laughs> He's great. Brady, you know what you should do? Brady, you know what you should do? What? Stage an attack. <laughs> just get the camera. Yeah, that's a, that's a work. Can't that's hurt you, it. Yeah, you, out well. you get an Indian, a black guy, and a Spanish guy, so you get the no, whole thing together. I'll, I'll beat up some people be for you. Good, then. Yeah, okay. okay. Good. White guy. Maybe, maybe two of you guys can fly out here and beat me up. Well, you know... Uh, if I can beat up, if I can beat up some Bernie Sanders uh, people, I'll do it. Oh, by the way, let oh, me just let me just say something quickly so I go on the record on this one. Yeah. Uh, fuck Bernie Sanders. Uh, oh. I no, really. I mean, come on, Bernie, you had your shot. Don't you understand? The reason you had a good shot then was because you were only up against one. Well, actually, two other people, and one of them dropped out. And then, so it was you and, and Hillary, but now it's you and the all of Western civilization uh, who's running for the presidency on the Democratic ticket. None take. of them are any good. They're, they're just as bad as all the other Republicans. And, and you know, Trump. Uh, we, we had enough Bernie, okay? I think that some of these Democrats are far more uh, liberal in many ways than Bernie is. I think, want a socialist? Gonna, I think it's going to be Klobuchar. Klobuchar nah. is a, it, well. It, it, she certainly looks good at this point. Um, yes, Patrick. I, I think she's more exciting, and she she's more centrist. I think she's gonna she's gonna be the she one. She could have a good She center. knows how to beat her staff. Who's that? Well, yeah. When she beats her staff, they only complain. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, staff. Patrick. Patrick had his hand up. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> but that, that, that's well, let Patrick talk, please. <laughs> yes, Patrick. What? you do Alan, if Gillibrand was in uh it, well it, she is in she's in she's <laughs> in with that group and so far as i'm concerned that cunt can take a long walk off a short pier uh because of what she did to al franken yeah, yeah. i mean uh, yeah. Uh, that, you know that was and she did that for political purposes she knew she be al franken was screwed yeah he was screwed and screwed by 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 uh, Gillibrand, who was doing it Completely for political purposes, I knowing that she was thinking of running for president. He, he should he should not have uh, been, uh, you know. I yeah. Out. I was no. I was disappointed in him for cut, cutting out that early. You know. I don't know what. Why do you think? Why do you think that he he did that? I think there was part of him. You know, he had he had a successful career before he ever you know, ran for the yeah. Senate. He's a comedian. Yeah, sure. and he was a writer, and, you know, he'd had some books that sold very well and so on. He was not, he didn't need the job, okay? And I he think I win. think when this whole thing hit, his whole attitude was, what the fuck do I need this for, you know? He should have stayed in for, for just, you know, I, I wanted him to stay in, not, not because I'm a fan of his, but because I thought he got railroaded. And I also think that you know, if you, you know, I, I felt that in the case, well, Ray Renati just we just lost him again. Um, uh, I think that part of the problem was also that uh, uh, it, uh, Gillibrand was a good case of uh, the Democrats eating their own, you know, and and there was something very wrong with that. And uh, I, I just, beyond that, I don't know what to say about it right, except. Alex, that, rank Rank the candidates real quick before uh, you go. I can't even begin to rank them. I don't know who they all are Come at this on. point. Come on, man. Uh, I, I, free I, Wednesday. Okay. Uh, 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 Kamala Harris, because I think she's hot. Okay, how's that? So. Huh? She's hot. Yeah, yeah. And and I, if OAC could run, I'd, I'd <laughs> run for her in a second if, if we could find some... Yeah. Uh, uh, well, anyway, she's wonderful. They're all wonderful. I think they're terrific. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't think, I don't Trump. think, I don't think uh, Biden should run. And I don't think Bernie should run. Biden will be seventy-eight years old if he runs in twenty twenty. Come on. Yeah, that's uh, I think I think it's Kamala and Klobuchar 
and uh yeah you know yeah hey listen i gotta go because we've run out of time here uh thanks phil won't see you tomorrow night okay jeff thank you so much tony thank you thank you ray renati uh thank you uh rob alfano uh charlie wallace always great to have you here sg nice to have you here and patrick blazik nice to have you here hey all of you why don't you give everybody a good wave goodbye and i'll wave back at you okay there they go ladies and gentlemen that's our citizen panel for tonight uh let me hang up on them so that uh, jack bishop can use the phone's next for the intersection, which follows immediately over most of the same gab net. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again. Let's see here. Uh, tomorrow night, same time. Oh, 10 o'clock. Uh, no Damien again tomorrow night. Uh, 10 o'clock, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>